one in every 150 children is diagnosed with autism. Autism is treatable. Recovery is possible. To learn more about autism, contact the Autism Research Institute at autism.com. Don't let your child become a statistic. Elmhurst.org to explore the new City of Elmhurst website. Find out the latest Elmhurst news, pay utility bills and parking tickets, report concerns, and much more. Elmhurst.org is an ideal way to discover what Elmhurst offers your business, your family, your life. My name's Dan Gibbons. I was, uh, four and a half years ago, I was very fortunate to be asked by Pete Tiziani and Phyllis Kupperman and Mary Catherine Brady and all the good folks at the uh, CSLD to uh, help them organize a walk, run, whatever. It turned out to be a walk. And uh, I'm going to introduce Pete Tiziani in just a second. It's been a pleasure for me to be a part of this and lend my name to it. And, and hopefully, the whole purpose of this is to help kids lead normal life. When Pete told me earlier today that, uh, that, uh, that Bree is, uh, who was nonverbal four years ago, five years ago, um, now she's verbal, second grade, you know, just leading a, in, a, in no special ed class, just a normal class, talking up a storm. That's what it's all about. And I said, hey, Pete, how about next year when, when uh, Jeannie and people from Comcast do the interview to, uh, to have her do the talking? So maybe there's going to come a day Instead of me introducing Pete to you next, maybe I'll introduce Brianna. Have a great day. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. It's our fourth annual Brianna and Friends Walk the Talk, and uh, that, that, that's, that's the situation. Back about, um, about four or five years ago, when Brianna was three, uh, she couldn't say a word. And uh, Rose and I, uh, Rose is right, right back here with, uh, with Bri, with the Thomas uh, jacket. Uh, we're at Loyola Hospital, and, and probably one of the toughest uh, things that happen to a parent uh, is when your kid gets diagnosed with a, with a medical condition. And when, when we got diagnosed with autism, it was kind of, it was, it was a tough thing to swallow. And, um, and you're wondering, what, what's the future going to be like for your kid? Uh, is she going to be able to talk? Is she going to be able to lead a normal life? And uh, we went right to the center right away because we knew that the, the Center for Speech and Language was the best uh, when it comes to dealing with these speech uh, issues, and they deal a lot, a, lot, a lot with kids with autism. And I had known Phyllis for many, many years, helping other families with, you know, from ECAF, uh, from the Elmer's Children's Assistance Foundation, um, and know, knew that, that she was able to help many. So uh, Phyllis has been great. She, she is, uh, the center is a, is a gem, uh, a boutique center here, right here in Elmer's that has serviced thousands of children and families uh, over, over the 32 years that they've been around, 
and uh, I just can't say enough uh, for what they've done for, for our daughter. And there is hope, you know, for parents that uh, are recently diagnosed and you're wondering what's going to happen, uh, am I, am I, is my kid going to have a future? There's a ton of hope. Uh, we got Representative Patty Bellock here. She, you know, two years ago she got the insurance bill passed for autism, so now it's actually recognized as a medical condition. It's covered under insurance. Thank you, Patty. Um, we're, we're, we're advocates. We're, we're trying to help, and, and there's, there's always things that we're, we're doing to make things better. Um, uh, but the biggest medicine for these kids is therapy. And if they get the therapy and the, the, the early diagnosis, they could really lead a, a fulfilling life. They could, they could communicate. They can uh, have, have joy. They can have emotion, as my daughter does. And um, so, so I, I just can't thank uh, you enough for coming out because you're going to enable so many kids like Bree to have, have those abilities because the center doesn't turn away kids because of financial situations. They, they will make sure that the kids get screened and they get the right therapy and that no child uh, gets left behind. So uh, with that, I want to uh, announce, uh, introduce the, the executive director, the founder of the Center for Speech and Language Disorders, Mrs. Phyllis Kupperman. Welcome, all you friends of Bree. Yay, thank you for coming out. Um, I can't add too much to what Pete has already told you, but we work with all kinds of kids with communication problems to reach their full potential, whatever that may be, and in whatever way that they can communicate and become part of their family and part of their community. So thank you for coming out on this less than perfect day, and thank you for being a friend of Brie, Brianna. Thank you. And before I introduce the president of our board, which is Nevin Hudlin, I, I also want to mention that there's a, a lady that is kind of one of the backbones of the Center for Speech and Language. Her name is Mary Catherine Brady. And uh, for, for those that are in the center, everybody knows who Mary Catherine is. She's the finance person. She makes, you know, she makes a dollar turn into three, four dollars. She watches the, the cost so that the center can exist. And uh, with, with the way reimbursements are, it's very, very difficult uh, uh, to, to, to keep a speech center going. So Mary Catherine is at, has been struggling with breast cancer, and recently she had uh, brain surgery. She had a tumor in her brain. She's not here today. Um, we have to definitely keep Mary Catherine in our, in our prayers and our thoughts. She's, uh, she's done a, a, a great job in keeping the center going, again, with, with minimal, minimal money. And uh, uh, she, she is really, really uh, uh, the person that, that, that makes, makes this, this organization thrive. So I, I'd ask you to, to keep her in your prayers and, uh, um, and know that, uh, Mary, we're, we're here for you. She's going to be watching this on cable. So uh, God bless you, Mary. We love you. And uh, with that, I want to introduce the president of the, of the board for CSLD, Mr. Nevin Hudlin. Nevin. Hi, good morning. Good morning. This is a great day, not only because it's our largest turnout ever, fourth annual. So congratulations on joining us for the largest turnout. This has been a, this has been a great year for CSLD as well. Uh, we were in the middle of a capital campaign. Uh, we're glad to report we're over 65% done through a $800,000 campaign. Uh, we are building a new facility uh, for CSLD. Uh, we just got our building permit uh, and we got our contractor on board. We should start construction uh, probably in a week and a half. So we're very excited about this new initiative. Uh, and I'd like to also thank you for attending today, and we hope you have a great walk. I think we have a raffle that we're going to do real quick. And uh, Mr. Dan Friedman, who's also a board member, will, uh, I believe, pull the lucky ticket here. Uh, before he pulls the ticket, I know we've got some other uh, officials that arrived. I see Alderman Kevin York and Alderman Pat Wagner here from the city of Elmhurst. Uh, I mentioned Representative uh, Patty Bellock, who is one of the lead um, legislators down in Springfield that helps kids with uh, special needs with autism uh, for not only human services but also for educational purposes. Uh, Patty has carried multiple pieces of legislation uh, for our, our, our family. So uh, we thank all these leaders for, for their support and their, their uh, inspiration um, to help our families.
With me now is Dan Gibbons, the uh, walk director for for Brianna and Friends Walk to Talk, and, and everybody knows Dan Gibbons. He's the, the walk director for Turkey Trot, Annie Ryan Run. Dan, when it comes to raising money, Dan Gibbons is the guy, uh, the go-to guy to, to help uh, local families and children especially. Dan, thank you for, for coming out today and, and for being uh, always a, a big, big uh, factor in, in the Brianna Walk. Oh, it's my, pr- my pleasure, Pete, to do this for you and your family and friends, especially uh, Brianna and all the kids that, are, uh, are th- that need help. I can't believe it's our fourth year. And we've raised what nearly a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, God bless, and, and we we've been helping families with this because of you and because of uh, the people that Cotton Walk every year. Families that uh, maybe can't afford the therapy or the diagnosis. Uh, Center for Speech and Language Disorders has been around for nearly thirty-five years now. Phyllis Kupperman, the executive director, uh, just just a great lady that is able to really get to these kids with autism and other conditions that often rob them of uh, speech and social skills. So, uh, and as uh, as I mentioned, you have the C- CDC Center for Disease Control just uh, up the number from one in one fifty to one in one hundred and ten. So this is problem is not going away anytime soon. So. Uh, it's important that we have we have the center. We keep the center strong, and, and thanks to Dan Gibbons, we're able to to continue this. Well, again, it's my pleasure. I think what's so cool about this, uh, Brianna was uh, diagnosed when she was three. She's eight now. She was nonverbal then. She's fully verbal now. And you said she's talking up a storm in second grade, and that's what events like this and, and caring and sharing and, and p- good people that come together. That's that's what helps kids like Brianna lead a normal life it's just very very it's ha- it's happy sad emotional ups downs and all that but it really makes a day like this worth it whether it's raining or sunny whatever you know and it, it, it goes to show you there is hope and um you know thank god when we uh came to the center and and, and phyllis was able to get brie talking and and becoming more social uh we wanted to make sure that every kid had that opportunity so uh i thank you dan for for stepping up and and really helping all these other kids uh to, to be Brianna's and to really be successful. Well, you know what? As you and I are doing uh, this interview, maybe next year you interview your daughter. Let her talk in front of a camera. That would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Absolutely. That would be a milestone. <laughs> yeah, great. Yep. I look forward to it. God bless, Dan. Thanks so much for all your help. You're welcome. With me is the executive director and founder of the Centers for Speech and Language Disorders, Ms. Phil- Mrs. Phyllis Kupperman. 32 years ago, Phyllis founded the center, and uh, she's just been helping kids for, for many, many years, kids that have autism and other conditions that rob them of, of the ability to communicate and have uh, social skills. And thank you, Phyllis, for your efforts and all your hard work. And, and uh, we're yet for our, our fourth annual Brianna and Friends Walk to Talk, so I'm sure uh, you've got lots to say. <laughs> yeah, so thanks for being everybody being out here on this uh, rainy day. Uh, although I think that we're going to get some sunshine pretty soon in time for the walk. Um, the center um, has seen thousands and thousands of kids. And um, in addition to which, we get emails these days from all over the world um, asking about uh, services for children with uh, speech and language problems and with autism and uh, those kids that read precociously, those kids with hyperlexia. So we're really um, uh, a small place, but nationally renowned. So that's uh, these days with uh, with the internet, I think we even have a more far reaching effect. So it's an important place. And we've been here in Elmhurst all this time and and we're uh, very appreciative of uh, our, everybody's support. Well, I remember when we were at Loyola back in uh, 2006, it was when Brianna got diagnosed, and I said, where do we go? Uh, Dr. Bezunis was our, our doctor at the time, and I said, we go, you know, Easter Seal, CSLD, and she goes, well, for speech and language disorders, there is, there's one place that's the best, and that's CSLD, and um, and I can't say enough. Phyllis has worked with my daughter from day one, and a, a kid that was virtu- you know, virtually nonverbal, and uh, now she's fully verbal in a mainstream second-grade classroom at, at Lincoln School, and, and it's it's to your credit, Phyllis. Well, and, and the other thing that's so important is that it's your credit as well. We work with parents to help their children um, so that they, it's just not the hour or so that they come uh, for the week, but they really learn about their children and how to uh, 
communicate with them on a day-to-day -day basis. And so Brianna's doubly lucky because she has parents like you and Rose um, and, um, and good school system and good therapeutic support. And we hope that that's the case for all children. And that's what we're looking for is helping as many children as we possibly can. Absolutely. And I have to give the credit to my wife and you because uh, she's she's there in the trenches at, in therapy with you. And, and uh, it's it's a it's a grind. Uh, but but you've you've uh, really made made her a, 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 an independent person, uh, somebody that laughs and enjoys life and socializes and has friends and imagination and things that we never thought a kid with autism can have. So uh, there is hope. Um, it's it's a great uh, day here in Elmhurst with CSLD. And uh, we're here to make sure every kid has has those opportunities. Yeah, so uh, again, every child has a potential to communicate, and whatever that potential is, we want to reach it. And uh, it's not that we create miracles every day, but there are little steps. Every, uh, every child moves in at their own pace, but we want to make sure that they reach the possible potential that they have within them and we look for ways and work as a team with everybody that's working with the children and and that's that's the best thing to possibly do i'm here live in elmhurst with phyllis kupperman the executive director of the center for speech and language disorders and she's helping kids every day with autism and other conditions that affect communication uh, become independent and fulfill their dreams god bless phyllis Today I have State Representative Patty Bellock. Patty Bellock has been one of the most biggest advocates down in Springfield for uh, people with autism, people with disabilities, human services, uh, special education. Uh, and Patty was the chief co-sponsor of, of Brianna's Law, which ensured uh, autism back in uh, 2008. And Patty, thank you for coming out today, and we appreciate all your advocacy. Oh, I'm excited to be here, Pete. Thanks for telling me about it and anything we can do to help with providing services for children with special needs. I'm always there for you. Great, and I know we uh, you were a big part of uh, another uh, another piece of legislation, James's Law, which a lot of the kids with autism are kids that wander. They often get lost, um, and and James's Law was actually named after a, a boy from Elmer by the name of James O'Brien, who was lost back in 2007. And we took we had literally the whole police department, fire department, public works guys looking for this young man. This this law will enable a locator. Uh, uh, basically the size of a, a wristwatch to be put on a child with autism and uh, for that to be triggered uh, to call 911 every 30 to 60 seconds. And that will help law enforcement agencies, local government, uh, and, and bottom line, save lives because the number one cause of death for kids with autism is drowning, and uh, that's because they often get lost. So, Patty, uh, can you, thank you so much for your advocacy down in Springfield. If you want to talk about that bill a little bit. Oh, right. That was a tremendous bill, and thank you for your advocacy. And yeah. we thank the governor for signing that bill. And that is extremely important. And it's really going to be a national model right. for uh, people with uh, children. And I think the mom was so pertinent when she said the frightening 
uh, event that was for three hours not knowing where their child was. And so that bill will help all parents with children with disabilities and also people with Alzheimer's disease. Right, yeah. So it's helping both both young people yes. and adults that have cognitive impairments, whether it's autism or uh, Alzheimer's or uh, dementia, whatever it might be. So, uh, you know, we've got fine representation uh, here in our in our, in our our community. Uh, Patty Bellock is uh, actually running for the, the, the new uh, house district, which is uh, all of Elmhurst. And uh, we welcome her. She's always been an advocate for people with autism and, and special uh, needs. And now she'll actually hopefully be representing Elmhurst. And I'll I will do whatever we can to help you out, Patty. Oh, thanks very much, Pete. I appreciate it. And I am thrilled to be here at this event today because this is what we need, more people involved throughout the state on a grassroots so that they understand the priorities that we need to make in the capital for people with disabilities and special needs, especially for children with special needs. So thanks for all you do, too. We appreciate it. My pleasure. And it's nice when you can bring ideas at the local level to right. people like uh, Representative Bellock, uh, who, who understands it and will embrace it and, and be a champion. So uh, this is what we do. Uh, this is advocacy at its best. This is families, uh, parents uh, that come to us, and we're living it. And uh, we've got people like Patty Bellock that, uh, that make it happen. Thanks, Thank Patty. Thank you. Thanks so much. And, you know, that was such a moving ceremony that you had with James's parents here. Yeah. And you're absolutely Absolutely right. Uh, the majority of the bills that come to Springfield should come from the people in the districts because they're the ones that know what needs to happen and give us the priorities to do to uh, give a better quality of life for especially special needs children. Thanks. And uh, Brianna's law has been actually introduced in over 20 states now since it was passed in 2008. And it's nice when Illinois is actually on the, on the pioneer side versus yes. on the behind side. So because of people like Patty Bellock, we're, we're going to be hopefully uh, more on that pioneer level. Absolutely. Well, Brianna's Law and now James Law, those are two models that yeah. will probably be implemented, I would say, probably in every state in the union, and that's ter terrific, especially on your part. Thank Absolutely. You. Live from Elmhurst, we're doing good things and uh, helping out uh, people with autism and people with disabilities. I'm uh, here, Representative Patty Bellock. God bless. a little bit of a wet one but uh we got everybody out and uh we made it we made a, a, a good piece of change for the for the charity i'd like to thank all of our sponsors sponsors like Strino Mello and durkin uh dc any realty dc any graphics uh the um the um we've got all the banks harris bank was out here today in support sbt community bank of elmhurst uh the, the sponsors are endless cancel uh, cast the castle dealerships castle chevy um uh just, just a, a great, great uh, turnout, uh, uh, and, and most of the, the dollars that we make are not only made in the walkers, which was a, a record turnout this year, even though we had bad, tough weather, but uh, the sponsors. So please uh, please patronize those sponsors. Spend your money locally in our community because uh, virtually all those sponsors are right here in Elmhurst, and they really care about CSLD. Uh, I'm with uh, John Skowalski here, our board member. How are you doing, John? Great. It was a great turnout, and thanks a lot for everybody to come. John, John, everybody probably recognizes John because he's always out there knocking on the doors, asking people for money for CSLD. He's a great man, and, and uh, we're, we're happy to be here. Uh, God bless Elmhurst and all the people from the community that, that came out today. And um, we'll be out next year for number five, and uh, hopefully we'll ring the bell again next year too because the kids keep on coming. Diagnosis is now 1 in 110, so it's not going away anytime soon, unfortunately. God bless.
One in every 150 children is diagnosed with autism. Autism is treatable. Recovery is possible. To learn more about autism, contact the Autism Research Institute at autism.com. Don't let your child become a statistic. Hello, my name is Battalion Chief Don Novak with the Elmhurst Fire Department. Did you know that over 85% of the child passenger safety seats are installed incorrectly? Here at the Elmhurst Fire Department, we offer a free child passenger safety seat inspection. All you need to do is call City Hall at area code 630-530-3090 for an appointment. Area code 630-530-3090. Because we care about your children. There are several thousand collisions involving trains each year, which result in over 1,000 injuries and several hundred deaths. A majority of these deaths occur when someone is struck by a train while trespassing on railroad property. Remember, railroad property is private property. Trespassing along railroad property is not only against the law, it's very dangerous. Avoid taking shortcuts. The only safe place to cross railroad tracks is at a designated crossing. Don't get caught dead on the tracks. Stay off, stay away, stay alive. 